and you can see I saved this as a 0.375, so three, at, three eighths by two inches long socket head cap screw. So however you want to name it, I think it's, um, you can see the, the name here is generic. So it has none of that size information associated with it. And so if you open this somewhere else, and this may be important for your design projects, it's, it's going to open what it thinks, and you may have to go back and resize any of your hardware. So I would have, sa I would have saved this, um, and then it's in my folder available for me to use. And uh, it would have opened it, so then I could go ahead and drag it back in or insert it back into the window. So it's sort of an unfortunate thing about Toolbox. Um, what you pull in the first time is not actually what you want to keep in, in the assembly. Um, you just want to take the opportunity to rename it. So this one again, we can open. I can do a file, save as, save as copy and open, and I'm going to do a .375 spring pot washer. And I'm going to save it. So now I've, I've got that one available to go back into my assembly. So I'm going to delete this one, it's a little convoluted, and then I'm going to go ahead and insert, oh, no, that's not what I want, my browse for my spring box. Okay. All right. So there we go. And this is an instance where you're going to use lock rotation. So I want these two surfaces to be concentric, and it's not going to offer me the lock rotation. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. Let's see if I can, I'm going to undo that one, because it disappeared on me, and I don't want to have to go through the process of finding it in there. Okay, so, oh, you've got to be kidding me. All right. Let's insert this again. Okay. All right, I'm going to try the faces first. So I know where it ends up. are coincident and it doesn't look like it until you switch it around but they are coincident and now I'm going to click on those it gives me the lock rotation button here but if it didn't for instance I could go back into the mates for this part I could open that concentric and I could lock rotation that's the only way you're going to get the dash to disappear, is the lock rotation on components like this where there's no orientation that's appropriate. Um, okay, <coughs> now I can put my bolt in, and I'll let you guys sort of work on the nut on your own in the interest of time. Notice here, uh, when you're inserting this hardware and other components, sometimes if you get it close enough to where it's going, uh, SolidWorks has an auto automate feature on it. Um, so it looks like it's giving me that concentric mate. Well, sort of. It was thinking about it, didn't think hard enough. Um, but at least oriented it the direction that I wanted to go. So I can go ahead and choose, and I always recommend going to the next part. Don't try to use a concentric mate back to this part or this part. Go back to the next closest part. And I'm going to lock rotation because that's a part that doesn't have any other features to allow me to lock it down. Just know. I don't have to necessarily hit lock rotation. I could look in here and I could look for one of the planes and I could even mate you know, the plane here to the larger plane in the 
the right hand plane. So I could use that as a way to lock it down in three in three directions, but lock rotation is just a whole lot simpler. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and insert, and I'm gonna show you just one of these, and you'll do the same thing. Uh, these carbide inserts, I'm gonna show you the square one. Okay, and these go right here. So first thing I'm gonna do is the Hole. Yeah. So I'm going to grab the hole, add the concentric mate, okay? And then I'm going to do these two faces, coincident. <coughs> and then again, you're going to run into probably the same thing here. I'm going to grab these two surfaces. And if I try to do coincident, it's not coincident. Um, it's going to be a parallel mate because there's some gap or distance. Oh. You were being really ugly to me. It's that same thing again. It added it in without me knowing it added it in. So, coincidence. So, it broke my. It broke it trying to make those things fit, so I'm just going to add my concentric back in, and we're nice and happy, and you can see there is a slight gap here and there, okay? Now, you, since you have another component that has exactly the same mates on the other side, I can do something called copy with mates. I select the component I want to copy the mates on, and you have to hit the arrow here, which is a little weird. But it puts those three mates up that I used in order, okay? So you can either click in each box and choose uh, the mate that you, mating surface you want, or you can just click, click, click in that order. So, and it gives you a little, a little bit of an idea of what those surfaces are. So I'm gonna click here, and then parallel to here, and concentric to here, and voila. This is very, very helpful when you have a hundred of the same bolts to put in. Uh, although you might use a insert with a some type of component pattern, but um, so copy with mates is uh, is pretty effective. So you could do that for both of these as well as the the round ones. And with these being round, you've got a concentric and a mate, and then you're going to lock rotation. Yeah. Um, as with them, it's the same side of the the bar sticking out. Can you um, like mirror them across the plane? Like, so I know they're on opposite sides, but say they're on the same side. Mm -hmm. um, could you mirror this across the plane? Yeah, I'm not sure if we have. I mean, there is a mirror component option, so yeah, it's certainly something you could look into. I, you know, I just prefer to use copy with mate 